Remember when I said that I was going to move away from doing one take videos and focusing on more produced uh, kind of videos? Yeah, that lasted all of like what one video. Uh, <laughs> I reserve the right to do videos like this every once in a while, so that's what I'm going to do. So what is this video? Midweek chat. And what is midweek chat? Well, it's a kind of a series, I guess you could say, or a week weekly staple of um, DVD Collector 1974's channel. Uh, AKA James, and he's been uh, doing these for a while now, I think. Um, <clears throat> and it's just like a kind of general video, and there'll be topics that he'll discuss uh, that are usually movie related. And um, the one he put up this week was uh, talking about a few things, one of which um, I kind of chipped in about. I, I, as he says in his video, um, uh, movie trailers giving way too much these days. That was something I was talking to him about on Facebook, and uh, something that I think is very true. Um, <clears throat> that's why I brought it up to him. And I'll give you a quick example of that. And before I, I do, also, I'm kind of making this a response to his video and also uh, Lunaria Claire's video. She made a response to the midweek chat. So this is kind of a response to both of those. So I'll try and work quickly and get through all the things I want to say. Um, because I watched both their videos, loved them. And there was just so much I wanted to talk about, I just had to make a video about it. So, <clears throat> oh, before I actually do get into everything, uh, please make sure you check out my last video, the final episode of the Epic Film Challenge. Put a lot of work into it. It's a review of the film Best Worst Movie. There are clips used from the film. Uh, it's a pretty fun video, I think, and uh, me and Connie are, are reviewing it, so uh, please check it out. Um, I put a lot of time into it and uh, just would like more people to see it, basically. So, yeah. Uh, where to start? I've forgotten. The trailers, the trailers. So, one example of this thing of trailers giving away too much or just shoving the film down your throat a bit too much. And that would be, um, just adjust the camera a second so I can see myself a little better. There we go. Um, The Amazing Spider Man. Uh, I love the, the, the Sam Raimi Spider Man films, even three. Um, although it wasn't as good as the first two, obviously, but that's a whole other story. Um, I really wasn't interested in seeing a new Spider-Man film. Wasn't that happy with the the choice of Andrew Garfield. Not if it was a bad choice, just wasn't the choice for me. I really love Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker, so any choice really would have been a step down. Oh, my chest is really tight today. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm having trouble breathing. <laughs> I should have a drink. I have some milk here. Okay, so Amazing Spider-Man. I wasn't too impressed with. The look of the well, not the look of the film. I don't know. I just wasn't impressed with what I was seeing, the pictures and everything, as the release date crept forward in 2012. And there was this one time we went to the cinema, and it was ridiculous, right? A couple of trailers, and then there was like the the short trailer for the Amazing Spider-Man. You know, wow, zoo, wow, the Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, okay, looks cool, I guess. Still not that interested. Next. Um, and then there was another trailer, and then the same trailer again. And I was like, hang on a minute. And it was the same thing. Whoa. But there was no Amazing Spider-Man like title. I was like, huh. And then it just segued into a like five-minute scene from the film. It was a scene with um, Peter Parker and... Who did she play? Emma Stone. Did she play... Was it Gwen Stacy? I think. Uh, it was a scene between those two, and it just went on and on, and I'm like, are we watching The Amazing Spider-Man, or like, what is this, you know, it was like a whole scene from the film, and then that finished, and it was like, The Amazing Spider-Man, and I'm like, okay, Sony, I get it, <laughs> The Amazing Spider-Man is coming out soon, and, uh, and then there's another trailer, and then there was, and I'm not exaggerating, there was a third trailer, this time it was like the full two to three minute trailer with the story and everything, and it was just unbelievable. I was like three, tra not even three trailers, two trailers, and a full scene from the film. Like they are real. They must have spent so much money on advertising. It's unreal. And you know, we went to see the film because uh, you know we had a cinema card, so we could see as many films as we wanted. And yeah, it's nothing special. So <laughs> it's just one of those things where it just shoved down your throat so much. And then a recent example of the other end of the spectrum would be Oblivion, the new Tom Cruise film. Well, it's not new anymore, but it was new a couple of months ago. And it was something to go see. You know, that was it, really. And I didn't want to see any trailers. I thought, let's just give this a fresh, completely, you know, going blind. 
And I loved it, because I hadn't seen any of it before. Every big shot was a surprise. I'm sure if you look at the trailers, it probably gives away all the big shots of the film and, and stuff like that. And uh, so yeah, that was a great experience, just to see a film without watching any of the trailers and uh, being completely surprised by everything. Uh, Story-wise, I guess sometimes they do give away too much, but um, again, this video could go on for a long time, so I'll try and just cut that down right there. Uh, although one thing I will say, on the audio commentary for Paul, the film star in Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, Seth Rogen, on the audio commentary Simon Pegg says how heartbroken he was when he saw the first trailers for the film, because it kind of gave away an important kind of... Um, plot part for um, K K is it Kirsten or Kristen Wiig, her character in the film, and um, there was a scene that's funny in the film, and they put it in the trailer, and they kind of just told you what happens with her character, basically, and Simon Pegg was like, you know, I just wish that they hadn't done that, and it kind of, you know, you just wish the audience could have experienced that moment for themselves as it built towards it, so and there you go. Uh, we're not the only people who think that the trailer sometimes are a bit too much and give away too much, especially with comedy films, they always give away a load of the jokes and stuff, but um, anyway, <clears throat> another thing um, James was talking about, and I'll try and get this as quickly as possible, because I don't want this to be a really long video, um, who are your favourite company put out DVDs and Blu-rays? I would say Criterion, I only have um, maybe six or seven, maybe eight Criterions, and I just absolutely love them, I'm in the UK though, so it's really hard for me to get them. Um, I got a region free Blu-ray player for the sole purpose of getting Criterions, in particular Seven Samurai. So I'd love to get more in the future, but um, who knows? It's uh, it's not a cheap uh, it's not a cheap um, uh, enterprise buying Criterion Blu-rays, but I do love them. And another thing he was talking about was um, the thrill of the hunt, as he put it, versus just buying everything online. And I. It's a really good point because it's such so easy these days, just click of a button just to buy something, you know, and it's just done. <coughs> Thrill thr the hunt is more, it's just more involved, you know, you can go out and kind of look for stuff, and I do enjoy that part of it, and just being able to buy something even, and hold it in your hands and take it home and watch it, you don't have to like click buy and then wait for a week for it to turn up from Amazon. But I do enjoy both, you know, I enjoy looking around on the internet trying to find good deals, and I enjoy the, the thrill of the hunt. Um, one thing in particular um, was VHS hunting in uh, 2009. The summer of 2009, I just went crazy. I went to charity shops, like all around the area where I live, and just looked for <laughs> any obscure VHS tapes I could find. And there were a lot of them. And they were just going so dirt cheap that it was just... I couldn't say no. And I, I think I built up a collection um, of new slash old VHS tapes, um, probably around 200, 250 tapes within that summer. So I still have all my old VHS tapes from when I uh, had a video player and stuff, but yeah, 200 new, they're all under my bed now, just collecting dust, but for some reason that summer I just went crazy just because it was just fun going out and finding, oh, like that, you know, that looks cool, and you know, I, I experienced the Godfather films for the first time on VHS in 2009, if you can believe that. Um, I didn't get into Blu-ray by until 2011, by the way, so that will explain that. Um, I actually watched a movie on VHS um, about a year ago, and it was pretty enjoyable. I actually enjoyed the bad quality. Anyway, uh, so yeah, the thrill hunt is, is cool. Buying things online is also cool, but um, I, can, I think there can be a good mix, you know? It depends. Uh, when you find a good deal online, it is very satisfying. Um, so that was uh, his my response to, to James's side of things. Uh, although, again... Uh, Claire talked about something that he talked about last week in his midweek chat, which was, um, what was it? <laughs> uh, I knew I wanted to say something about it, so it must be in my head somewhere. Uh, why we like the things we like, okay. And he's just talking about basically how people like different things and how you shouldn't be judgmental of other people for things that they like, and I've always held that kind of, uh, uh, that opinion myself, you know, and I never shy away from the things that I like, you know. A couple of days ago in work, was talking to a friend of mine and uh, a co-worker and uh, he was saying how his friend had sat him down to watch the Twilight films to, to show him that they're not that bad and he was like oh it was the worst thing ever and I said do you know what I like them uh, I think the first one's really good second one's okay the third one got a bit yeah and then the last two just weren't that good at all but I really enjoyed the first one I thought the first one was a great movie 
went to see it in the cinema, didn't know anything about it, thought that was really cool, enjoyed that a lot, and then it just became this whole thing where it was like, oh, Twilight, you know, and just, yeah, sometimes the film's reputations uh, can kind of take over, you know, your opinion of them, I guess. Um, not just films, other things as well. So, yeah, I, I think uh, just like what you like and just don't care what anyone else thinks because, you know, who cares? How does, how does that change anything? Case in point, one of my all-time favorite films is Last Action Hero. I would probably put it in my top ten favorite films of all time. Do I think it's one of the top ten best films ever made? No. Do I think it's in the best 100 films ever made? No. But I absolutely love it, and I just think it's absolute genius. I <laughs> love every second of it. I could watch it over and over and over again. Never gets old. It's always funny. I'm almost laughing thinking about it. It's that good. Um, but yeah, and I'll never shy away from saying that I love that film with a passion, and it's fantastic. So, yeah. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to address. I feel like I'm sure there was. But there you go. Some few things you need to mull over and uh, get back to me on. Leave some comments, you know, get involved, make a video response, make a, a midweek chat of your own. Although this isn't really midweek anymore, it's actually technically Thursday in the early hours, so yeah. Um, thank you for watching, anyway. Um, I'm enjoying my milk. And maybe I'll do some more of these midweek responses. We'll see. I, I don't know. It depends, I guess. I'm still working on so many other videos. It's, it makes my brain hurt just thinking about them, to be honest. <laughs> but there you go. Um, uh, it feels like there was probably something else I wanted to talk about. But go check out those guys' videos. Uh, Claire's was great. I loved the rant. It was just <laughs> hilarious and true. And uh, James' video was, was really good, too. So I'll leave a link to both of their videos in the uh, the classic description box below and you can go check out those videos and if you haven't checked out those guys go check out their channels highly recommend them subscribe if you like them and uh, yeah see you next time but he's not quite as cool as you What are you doing? The video's over. Go home. Well, I guess you're still watching, so I may as well give you another little uh, anecdote. There's actually something I forgot to uh, talk about, and if you're watching this far, then you're going to hear about it. And it was in regard to the trailers thing. Um, when I went to see Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, uh, over 10 years ago now, fuck. Uh, <laughs> I, feel, I was starting to feel a bit old. Um, of course, there've been trailers up the ass with that film, and I was, you know, I'd seen everything, looked up everything, all the magazines. I was a huge kind of that was the height of my Star Wars teenage fandom when Attack of the Clones came out. I was so excited, but they never showed uh, that Yoda was wielding a lightsaber in the film. Now I had read about it because I had the novelization, and it kind of gave it away. So I was looking forward to it, but you hadn't seen any of it in the trailers. And I remember sitting there, open at night, on my own, in this packed out theater. Uh, El Cinema, and there was Yoda. Oh, the shit just got real. Pulls open his thing, woof, brings his lightsaber to his hand, his little clawed hand with the force, just ignites the lightsaber, and I was just like, how is this even gonna look? And then he just jumped at Christopher Lee, started jumping all over the place, and I was just like, <laughs> like it was, it was one of my favorite movie experiences ever in this in a cinema, because the whole room just went, and it was like you felt like almost a shockwave, like you could feel this energy of everyone just going, you know, and it was just yeah, it was really really awesome. Um, you know, you can say whether you you like that lightsaber fight or not, the way they animated Yoda and stuff. But that moment was just like, cause again, cause no one had seen it, and it was such a surprise and a shock. And that was what was great about it as well. Just even if it was rubbish, just just the the shock of it was just like 
it was brilliant so yeah